everyone. You are listening to the Mother Days podcast. I'm Teresa Palmer. And I'm Sarah Wright Olson. Welcome, Daisies. Oh my God, you're in for a treat. We are back with our dear friend, Rumor Willis, and she is here to share her birth story. And I am so excited. We were both just over the moon. I could barely like <laughs> sleep last night thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you to our sponsor, Needed, for powering this week's episode. Use code MOTHERDAYS, D-A-Z-E, for 20% off your first month with Needed's premium perinatal supplements. I love birth stories. I love them. I love them. I love them. Rumor sent us um, some divine photos from the oh birth. My gosh. And so, of course, in my head, I've sort of made up what I think happened and I know. You know, how it all unfolded <laughs> because I've seen these photos. But I just am so excited to hear the full story. And yes. um, we got to have a gorgeous little glimpse of your divine daughter. And I'm just so happy for you. I know. I'm so excited for you. So, okay. So we kind of set the stage before of your intentions going into birth. We talked about your pregnancy and just everything that brought you to this day. And you were only like, what, a couple weeks away and then Mm -hmm. the birth happened. So take us now to the time leading up to you going into labor and, and like start telling the story. I, looking back at it, I realized that I had like a delightful pregnancy because someone I was talking to Dr. Berlin and he was like, so you seem like you're having a really hard pregnancy. And I was like, was I? Cause that was it seems so easy. I just feel like I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they do the men in black, like, and just wipe your memory. You're like, yes, of course I could do this again. This is great. <laughs> But also probably because I had exactly the birth I wanted. So, you know, I don't mm-hmm. feel like traumatized or like anything like that. Um, I was losing my mind, though, towards the end. I was like 40 weeks. And even though my midwife, Andula, had told me, don't listen to your or like your due date is not real. It's not a thing. Ignore it. Of course, it, you know, starts getting closer and you're like, all right, yes, yes, yes. My other (laughs) friends have gone early. Like my psychic told me this baby would come early. (laughs) And I hit 40 weeks and it's like nothing, not even like a sprinkling of going into labor. And I just start being such a drama queen. I was like losing my mind. I know. I know. It's the worst feeling. It's so hard. (laughs) Because, you, you know, I've got my sciatica. I'm huge. I'm trying to get everything ready. I probably had not been going on enough walks even. She had risen back <laughs> up a little bit from going in the pool. I'm just like, okay, what do I got to do? <laughs> so I go to the farmer's market because I go every week. And we had been getting some work done on the house, of course, during construction. And of course. <laughs> a window had gotten left open. And my little cat, I had this like super fluffy white little cat and she got out from the window and she didn't have, I have like an air tag collar on her even because she's such an escape artist. So she gets out. I'm in a frenzy and a panic. I'm calling my boyfriend. I'm like, I can't find her. What am I going to do? Oh my God. I'm walking down the street, just like penguin walking, lumbering everywhere. I, I'm like, you have to come home right now. We have to find her. If this cat is dead right before I give birth, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> yeah. I can't deal with this. <laughs> so I'm outside. He pulls up in his car and I see her like just in the road, like four or five houses down. And I take off in a full sprint, like full with my nine month pregnant belly just like full sprinting and he was like babe I've never seen anybody run that fast you were going faster than the car <laughs> so I'm like just lumbering after I get her back we go on a long walk that night so the rest of that night I'm like oh, okay my Braxton Hicks are like a little stronger maybe something I'm getting so excited but nothing I, my water is not breaking I have no mucus plug coming out not a So the next morning I go see Dr. Crane to check and he's like, all right, you're like 30% of face and about a half a centimeter dilated. But to me, I'm like, yes, it's something. I got something going on. This is great. (laughs) And I get home and we have like a very mellow day, walk around. 
my mom and my sisters come over that night. And so it's like a madness. It's a full house because I think something's happening or at least I'm just hoping I can like will it into action. Yes. So I'm kind of having contractions, but because I'd been having Braxton Hicks so much towards the end, I kind of couldn't tell. My water's not breaking, nothing. So I'm just like, okay, maybe, but I could just be gaslighting myself. It's very nice. (laughs) (laughs) So at like four, maybe 5 a.m., I'm the only one up. My mom, my sisters are sleeping on the couch in our house. And I call my doula over and I'm like, I I think maybe you should come check this out because I'm, they're like coming like five minutes apart. I'm checking it out. At 6 a.m., I lost my mucus plug, you guys, and I've never been so delighted. There's a photo of me, <laughs> and, 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 like, being like, oh, my God, you guys, this is <laughs> Oh, my God, I think I was just, like, weeping. Oh, my God, so you haven't slept. You're not sleeping. You're just kind of up being like, oh, is this it? Is it? Yeah, because I finally, it was just me and my sister Tallulah in the bath. Everyone else had fallen asleep, and, she, and I'm in the bathtub, and she's talking to me, and she's, like, kind of <laughs> awake, and I'm just like... Okay. And then at one point, everyone was asleep and it was just me before my doula had arrived. And I was like trying to just really <laughs> talk to myself. <laughs> talk to the other. I'm like, okay, this is happening. It's going to be great. And then I got a little bit of sleep and my contractions slowed down. And so by the time we woke up in the morning, my doula ended up staying the night. She's the best woman ever. She literally slept on the floor on a sheepskin next to my bed. <laughs> oh, my God. That was an angel. We woke up the next day and my contractions suddenly are like 14 minutes apart. Mm. And I just break down and I'm like, if I have to go through a whole nother night of this, like, I don't know what I'm going to do because it's it's pain with no context, right? Mm. You're doing this thing that you've never done. You don't know how long it's going to be. You don't know how bad it's going to hurt. You've So for me, at least to someone who's like, next to control or at least plan Mm. no idea this could go three days and I'm like I don't I don't know if I can do that yeah so it was this like prodromal labor the stop start pattern that to me I've had that before it's so frustrating it's really hard because you think it's going and then you let your birth team know and you're like oh guys this is it and you're like oh false alarm (laughs) and there's just something I I realized for me that so much of this giving birth was such a kind of psycho spiritual also uh, work for me because I had so much fear. So we go on a walk in the morning. I was, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 12. We go on a, a long walk with my family around the, the neighborhood, come back. My midwife comes over to check me and I am a hundred percent effaced in two centimeters. And I literally start weeping and I'm like, <laughs> you guys, I did it. I'm so proud of myself. I was like, all right, at least there was something that was happening last night. Yes, I was yes. towards something. My body was doing something. And two centimeters to me was like, yes, gold. I, yeah, <laughs> that is so good movement. But I started doing this thing where, um, when I would have a contraction, I started talking to myself because I had all this fear come up and I would just start sobbing. And I was like, Hey, little girl, it's okay that you're afraid. It's all right. Like you're doing great. You can do this mm. because I didn't really know where I was at. And my doula looked at me and was like, so since it's slowed down, you know, I think I'm going to go. And I don't know what it was, but I think I'm someone, I guess, <laughs> who likes t- to be under pressure <laughs> because literally maybe five minutes later, all of a sudden my contractions were back and they were like, five to seven minutes apart something oh wow uh, full so force like, coming back mm, hang on maybe i'll <laughs> yeah, say like, you're not leaving <laughs> this is happening this is happening today <laughs> that's I'm amazing doing another night of this. that's amazing so they started coming and coming really fast and really hard to the point where you know when you have those and you're not really working with the contraction and it it just feels like you almost can't breathe yeah mm. it's like overwhelming you mm-hmm. yeah and so I was in such fear and I'm like bracing against each one mm-hmm. and they put me on the damn peanut ball to try and like help situate her better. And that was so brutal trying to sit still through a contraction, uh, which is why I get why most women who are, if you're in a hospital, I, I can't even imagine having to sit still. Yeah. No. There's no way. If I hadn't been able to move, there's no way I could have done what I was able to work with mm. and do. But my midwife comes over and after, and then she leaves for a little bit and I'm still kind of like super afraid, but 
I get in my bathtub and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this guts. And it's just every time I was having one, I was just like bracing. Mm. And then I don't know what happened. My doula said something to me. We had some like hypnobirthing YouTube uh, gal chatting and I just started moving with the contraction in the water. So I'm literally holding the sides oh, of the yeah. send you guys this video. <laughs> and I literally start like, <laughs> I don't know, like gyrating or moving my hips. It, it literally looks like I'm having sex with an invisible person in the water. <laughs> I Amazing. have a birth like that too. Yes. <laughs> and my friends, like, it was almost sort of uncomfortable to watch because we thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally like holding the edges, like trying yes. to. Like, it was the only thing that, that, like I was able to get through it. Yeah. yeah. It was wild. So then I'm I in it. <laughs> I'm in the bath and then I got out for a little while and then I got into this rhythm because they were pretty intense at that point. That was that was pretty gnarly. Yeah. And so you're moving, are you vocalizing? Yeah, a little bit. I think I was just so shocked after the first one I got through where I was like, "Whoa, like I I can I think I can do this." okay. Like, I, I think I'm going to be okay. There's a video even of my mom and my doula, like high-fiving. They're like, yes, she finally got it. She's letting go. Oh, like, working yes. It. it was amazing. And then I end up, they, I got out of the bath and I went on my bathroom floor for a little while. And it was like, my mom, she has her tiny little dog. And which was amazing. It was our mascot and my boyfriend. And I've got like a pillow between my legs and I'm laying on the ground in between every contraction because I'm so tired at this point that I'm literally, we had like a system going where I'd be like, okay, and then I'm getting on my hands and knees, moving around, you know, just trying to do circles. And then as soon as it would start to slow down, I lay down again and try and get mm. whatever sleep I could. And were you having micro sleeps? Yeah, a little bit, which yeah. I, I remember you guys talking about. Yeah, mm. yeah, I had those too. There's no concept of it. I know. Like, no way I can sleep for two minutes. Like that's no way. You can. Like, you and yet you do. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you guys, I'm I'm like, I, my body is like, oh, I need to push. But, but in my Whoa. mind, like, yeah, in my mind, I'm like, I, I'm only, I don't even know how dilated I am. But my body is literally just doing that. Like I, I can't. <gasps> and so yeah. my life is not there. And I'm like trying to tell my doula and I said, I, I need to push. I'm trying. She's like, wait, 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 wait a second. I don't know if you should do that. And have, did any of your midwives or doulas talk to you guys about the purple line in the back? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So she looked at my purple line and was like, okay, you're, you're probably close, but I don't know. She was like, do what you can to try not to push. We'll call your midwife, Alex. We'll try and get her here. Alex comes and... I had dilated from two to eight in like 40 minutes. Oh <gasps> my gosh. <gasps> yeah. That's no wonder insane. that was so intense. Oh, was no so wonder you were gyrating. Oh my gosh. It's literally the only way. But I was like, okay. So she told me that and I was like, okay, thank God. Cause like my, oh, I wow. literally it was like, I, I have to start pushing. Meanwhile, by the way, my water still has not broken. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I'm just like, okay, I have no idea what's happening. So they put me in the birth tub and I'm in there and I kind of, and I ask if I can start pushing and she says, it's fine that I'm like eight ish, but you know, that it's cool. She was like, whatever your body wants to do, just trust it. And she was like, I can feel the bag bulging. And of course, mm. being the like birth geek that I am, I was like, oh, I have to feel, I have to like to see what's happening up there. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was her head. I didn't realize it was the bag. Like I, wow. I thought it had, like popped somehow and it hadn't. And I could literally feel it was like a water balloon, but just was, <gasps> wow. a, it was the wildest thing that I've ever felt. How far wow. up was it? Because my doctor always said that mine is so far away <laughs> where my cervix is. He was really? like, it's so hard to get to you to check you. And so once my whole thing, like, you know, position. So how far did you have to put your hand up to feel the bulge? Um, Not that far. Like a finger length. Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. I didn't even wow. push hard because she was, you know, it was, it, it was really <gasps> close, but like, oh my gosh. It's so wild. <gasps> oh my gosh. 
So if you listen to our show, you know that Sarah and I are baby obsessed. Um, Mm -hmm. We keep trying to convince the old hubaroons to have more babies with us, (laughs) Um, which hopefully they will. But I wanted to share this crazy story because, look, I've been wanting to have kids since I was a teenager, really. Mm -hmm. But when I was really seriously thinking about it. I went to my doctor, I was probably 26, 27, and he was like, okay, so how long have you been having prenatals? And I don't know if this was anyone else's experience, but I was like, wait, what? Don't you just take that when you get pregnant? And he was like, no, the recommendation is that you're supposed to take prenatal supplements three to four months before even wanting to conceive. So that really threw me for a loop. And I think you know, there's that added pressure of just knowing that pregnancy and postpartum are some of the most nutritionally demanding times in a woman's life. And of course, we know that our baby's health now and for years to come, it's it's really truly influenced by our nutrient status. So then I was like, okay, where, where do I go? Like, what what do I do? And there's so many prenatals out there. But if you're anything like me, I get so nauseous when taking a pill in my first couple of pregnancies, I would get so sick. And so in my last pregnancy, my friend was like, oh, I use this brand called Needed and they have a prenatal multi. It's for before, during and after. And it's a vanilla powder. So you can put it on your food. You can drink it. You can use it before, during and after pregnancy. And it's all the nutrients that you need, which is just so fantastic. And no nausea. I can no tell nausea. you guys, no nausea. Yeah, it was amazing. I had it with Prairie and it was such a game changer. I hated, I remember feeling so afraid in the mornings. Like I'd eat my breakfast and I'd have this huge <laughs> pill and I was like, oh, here it comes. I'm going to get sick for the next few hours. Get stuck in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Needed was actually designed by women's health experts that test nutrient levels based on the latest research and in-practice insights from thousands of women. And it's the number one nutrition brand recommended and used by more than 4,000 women health experts, uh, midwives, doctors, functional medicine doctors, OBGYNs. Um, When I found that out, I was completely blown away. But this is something that so many of my friends have been talking about lately. Yeah, it's been wonderful. And we love that Needed also offers a premium supplement for every single stage of motherhood. So from egg quality support for women trying to conceive, shout Mm -hmm. out to Sarah, woo woo, (laughs) (laughs) to a lactation support plan for breastfeeding mums like me who hasn't stopped breastfeeding since 2014. (laughs) (laughs) There's just so much on the journey to motherhood that we can't control, but nutrition is a big one that we actually can control. Yeah, guys. And now you can join us on the Needed journey. Head over to thisisneeded.com and use code MOTHERDAYS, that's Mother Days with a Z, for 20% off your first month of Needed products. How exciting. Did it just fill you with like adrenaline? Were you like, oh my gosh, I'm so close. I was so excited. And that's why it's like, even now, I I can't even necessarily give context to the pain or remember it because I was just so excited. Yeah. That things were happening and things were moving. And so I kept pushing a little bit and I'm on my hands and knees. Oh, I had gotten into a birth tub out in the living room because I had decided that I didn't want to be in the bath. I was like, I want to be in my living room. I want everyone to have a seat. (laughs) (laughs) You're like me. I'm like, bring on all the energy. I want everybody in here. Let's all do this together. (laughs) Yeah. I always birth with like a room full of people. Like all my friends. I always have so many people. (laughs) People were like, you're going to want to be in like a tight space. That's how the rest of like mammals do births. And I was like, no, no, give me the piano and give me, I need light, <laughs> you know, some candles and this thing and a seat for everybody watching. Um, yeah. But we're in there. And so I looked at my midwife and I was like, so like, should we break my water to kind of help get things going? And she was like, well, you can, if you want to. And I was like, what do you mean I can? She was like, well, if you just on the next contraction, just put your finger up there and put a little pressure on it and it should pop. Wow. Like, I can do that? <gasps> okay. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I literally 
I had a contraction. I pushed my fingers up there, put a little bit of pressure against it. And all of a sudden it just went. (gasps) (gasps) Oh my God. You broke your own water. Get out. That's that's the first first time I've heard of a girl doing that. Love that. I mean, I thinking back to it, I'm like, that's cool. But like, man, if I could have, what if she would have come out in sack? That would have been also very cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So then I'm pushing for a little bit. And, uh, you know, I am I started also making those vocalizations a little higher. And so everyone, of course, is telling me to do what they tell you to do, okay. which is like yeah. them from the low place. But I, I couldn't, I couldn't be on my back. At one point I even tried and everyone grabbed my legs and I was just like, everyone get the fuck off of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I go. And I was, but I was only in there maybe for, I don't know, like an hour, hour and a half. And after I broke my water, I could feel her head and I could feel how much hair she had, which yes. was oh, exciting. so cool. I thought it was the most amazing thing ever. And my midwife was checking her heart rate and it dropped once. And so they were kind of going to leave it. And then it dropped again and they go, okay, we're going to like, why don't you get out of the tub? We might need like a little bit more gravity or a first time mom. So they put me on a birth stool and I'm thinking it's going to be this like gorgeous wooden, like carved thing with a hole in the middle. White and plastic or something. It's It's literally a piece of metal. (laughs) Yeah. Oh God. Like what you would see in a shower. (laughs) At a hospital. But there's no seat on it. Yeah. <laughs> Literally just two pieces of metal. And so I even said to her, I was like, is where's the seat? She's like, this is it, kid. I was like, okay, all right, here we go. I was just so like, let's do this at that point that I just, I sat down and they checked her and her heart rate was still kind of, it got back up, but it dipped again after I was pushing for a second on the stool. And my midwife kind of just had that moment where It was almost like a movie scene. And I know you guys will get this where she kind of locked eyes with me and was like, we got to get her out right now. And I was like, cool. All right. Nothing else matters. Like, I know I've been in pain, but she said, I can cut you and she'll come out, you know, right away. And I was like, look, if that's what you have to do to get her out safely. Great. I totally get why moms do crazy things in those situations because you're like, sure. If she's, you know, there's something wrong. Literally, as soon as I said that, I had a contraction and her head came out all the way out in the next push. And then her whole body came out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Again, maybe me under pressure. pressure. Like, oh, great. I got to get her out. So, Oh, my but her gosh. Head, like, her head wasn't it, like you could see the top of her head, but it's not like I had time to like let my tissue stretch or like stretch. Oh, wow. Her head was like here. And then, and then she then literally all the way out and then Ooh. all the way out. And was that, how was that for you? Did you feel a sting? Did you feel a burn? No. Like <gasps> I don't even, it, 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 she, it was just like, I think I was pushing so hard and I just like, it, it's like my body and my mind went totally somewhere else because in the moment it was just like boom, boom. And then she was out. And so then you have all that oxytocin and you're like, Oh my God, this is my baby. And so they're holding her, my partner and the midwife caught her. And that's the only thing that I wish I could have done. But I know in that situation that, you know, I was like holding onto the stool. If I could have caught her myself, I would, that would have like checked all the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So she she had the cord wrapped around her neck, but then she also had it like a sash around her body, which was wild. I had never like. And so did they just unwind it? Yeah. And they're both trying to do it at the same time. <laughs> they're like, and finally I was like, guys, just stop. Come here. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then they handed her to me. And I think I sent you guys that photo where I'm literally uh, just ugly crying, holding uh, her. Because uh, I'm like, so this is the beautiful. most beautiful being I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Because oh. you don't, you know, in your head, you're like, yeah, I, I want, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to have a good looking kid I, or maybe you never know. But then they come out and she was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. <laughs> I, could oh. not, I could not believe it. And I'm holding oh. there and I'm looking at my sisters. And I'm like, oh my God, you guys. And my mom, and my partner, I'm like, oh my God, this is and so. Is everyone crying? Sobbing, all of us. <laughs> of course. Cute. And then they try, I try to like stand up. So I've got her in a towel because th- there was a little bit of meconium um, in the fluid that came out. And mm-hmm. so they just had me um, keep her uh, like flipped kind of like a football hold so that she, she could drain. Let it drain. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm holding her in a little towel and I go to get up to sit on the couch, which is right nearby, um, to sit down for a second. And I'm like, uh, I, I, and then I try to sit down and I go, you guys, I can't sit down. It's too much pressure. And so literally maybe, I don't know, like less than a minute after I had her, I go to walk back over to the birth stool, like a few steps away. And I go here, hold on one second, guys. And I literally just push my placenta out into oh, my hand. My gosh. <laughs> I barely caught it on the ground. <laughs> you caught your own placenta. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't catch a baby, but you did get the placenta. So you did get one of them. <laughs> okay. By the way, did it feel so good coming out? Oh, God. It's like such a, a good hot feeling. pack. It's just uh, like a hot bowl of pudding or something. Slippery, just like warm. coming through. It just like <laughs> also blah. just to then. To, I was like, I just had to have everything out of my body. I was like, I, I know. Just, if, you know, if there's anything left in me, cannot yes. do it. So then I got it all out and I was like, oh, okay. Yes. I'm okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That I- is epic. And tell us about those first, like, few minutes. I want to hear about the latch. Like, what happened in that, like, yeah. close birth? Hi. Like, right after the baby comes out, like, where, where are you, like, is she okay? Is she breathing? Like, all those moments, like, at the what? first. I, like, I didn't even have that moment of, like, is mm-hmm. she okay? It was just, like, I, be, I feel like maybe she cried a little bit. She's mm-hmm. also the quietest baby. She's the most mellow child Everyone's like, wow, you have a really good baby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she was so mellow. Like she wasn't like freaking out. She wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like a stark thing because I just had her on me. And I, then I think after I like kind of waddled with her after I pushed my blissin down, I like waddled with her to the bedroom and was trying to lay down. But it like I, I couldn't sit up straight you know, cause it just feels yeah. too much pressure. And I didn't realize that I, I had tore a little bit. Um, mm. and of course, you know, I've got like, I've got a whole household. So everyone's like, give me the baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hadn't peed in a really long time. And I kept feeling like when I was in the birth tub that I had to pee, but I couldn't. Mm. And so both my doula and midwife were like, listen, it, it really is important for you to try and pee, you know, cause they were worried that like I could have had a bladder prolapse or like something like that. So I handed the baby off to her dad, even though I would have not let anybody take her from me for <laughs> two hours after that. <laughs> and I came back and my midwife was like, well, since you don't have the baby, can I kind of like see the lay of the land? Sure. There? Yeah. Yeah. So I literally have my sister and my boyfriend on the bed. They're holding her and I have this huge mirror right across <laughs> from the bed. And I literally end up just sitting like spread eagle with everyone talking to me and and I can't see, but my legs are like up like this, this big yeah. in front of me. And my midwife goes, okay, you tore a little bit. It's not too bad. It's just like the first, you know, the first layer of skin. And she was like, mm-hmm. and there's a little flap that we have to cut off. And I was like, <laughs> a little flap, a little flap. <laughs> like, okay, we have to um, cut it off. Can we just and did like- you tear <laughs> up near your urethra or at the bottom part? At the bottom Oh, I tore right at the top. And I also had a little flat. I can't even imagine tying it like, at the top. Well, it's terrible when you piss, let me just yeah. say. <laughs> it's like the most painful, stinging thing in all the land. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because my midwife, when, when I got on the stool, kind of looked at me too. I forgot about this. She looked at me and she goes, it's a real tight squeeze down there. I'm going to have to stretch your tissue a little bit with my hand. And I was like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, gosh, <laughs> wow. feel, like, cut her out. I could feel that it was a tight squeeze because yeah. I was like, you know, I had my hand down there when I was pushing and trying to like, you know, give counter pressure at different places. And I was like, I, I don't know. I just had an intuition that it was going to be like <laughs> some sort of thing. Yeah. Wow. I had, I had a Barbie vagina before. I'm not yes. going to lie. A Barbie <laughs> vagina. <laughs> which I don't even know if we should say in public. Oh, my God. No. It's my girlfriend the other day. She was like, oh, I went out with my friends and we were all staying together and I was in the shower and she she looked at my vagina and she was like, you've got a porno pussy. Oh, my gosh. It's just all so, like, perfect and tight. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, that's so hilarious. And so she's, like, proudly with her porno pussy. I was like, oh, she's, she's like, like wearing babies. it as a badge of honor yeah. as if she's she like, could I'm do so anything to change. 
change that. it. <laughs> yeah. That was and way for like every other area in your life is great. Other than when you're giving birth, birth. I, feel like, <laughs> I have not stretched my tissue enough. I've not done enough pelvic yes. floor work. Okay. Yes. yes. I knew it even towards the end because there was so much weight. You know, uh, on it, I was like, it feels tighter down here. I feel like it's just been like yes. <laughs> everything up. Like it, I, I was st- still when she she had to sew me up, and so she was like, okay, the lidocaine's gonna sting. We're gonna give you a little of this. I could like, <laughs> I was like, I can't even feel the lidocaine that you're putting in. The shots didn't feel like anything at that point, and I was just laughing at being like nude in my bed with this like you know cacophony yes. going on but oh, oh wow I couldn't imagine it also any other way so she was sewing me up and she goes okay so there's this little it's very tiny but it's already turning blue so I think I think we I think we gotta just like snip it off and I was like do what you gotta do <laughs> is that pain like what <laughs> so do you yeah, get to was have that it numbed yeah so she numbed everything Oh, okay. thank God. Yeah, I was a little bit like, do you numb me before you start sewing me up? Like, what's what's the protocol here? Yeah. Not in a hospital. Obviously, in a hospital, it's like d- d- super, you know, dialed in. But again, I didn't know that much about kind of like the model of midwifery care, what that looks like when you tear, what you have to do. And she was like, look, it's really not that bad. Like, you're, the way that you tore is, I don't know what level it was, but, you know, I don't think it was that bad. And she was like, look, if we try and reattach this, it could cause you more problems because it could be, you know, mm. folded over. And so they gave me a lot of lidocaine and snipped it and I couldn't feel it. <gasps> you couldn't feel it. And how's the recovery wow. been? Um, I, I was doing too much and on my feet too much. And so it took a little bit longer. It also just feels strange. It felt like I had like a you know, you go from having all these like soft bits down there and how you felt your vagina and your vulva like every day for your whole life to like, wow, it totally feels different. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit of scar tissue and how does this feel? And also I'm someone who likes to see things. So I tried to look like way too early on in the yeah. mirror. It was like, don't look, it's going to look like a Franken badge. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, is it okay? Is there something wrong? Like what's happening here? This is <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm good now. And it's, and it, and it's, I, I think also part of the healing process to me is like, rem- I keep having to remind myself to go slower, to be more tender, to, you know, give my body a rest. But it's, it's so hard because I just, I, I look at her and I'm like, I just want to do everything and. Oh, and take her out and like just fold her into your life and see people. And I know that feeling. It's the best. Ugh. The best. But, I, and I also understand why people, like I, I gave birth to her and maybe like five days later, I was like, I could do this again. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how long, how long did it take to heal? Okay, cool. I want to ask you um, to go back to this moment in your birth when you talked about um, how you were fighting against the contractions and the waves. Yeah. And then some one said something or something happened. And then you really just, you just like something switched and you started to ride them, gyrate with them, flow in the water with them. Like, do you remember it being an actual thing? Like where you were like, did it once like one contraction and you were like, Oh, I get it. Like, I get what this is. Was it like, did you have to release and surrender and give into it? Like, talk about that a little bit. I think there's so much of me that just generally is a bit afraid of the unknown. Like, I love to know what's going to happen. If someone Mm. could have said your birth is going to be this long, it's going to hurt this bad. And like, I would be like, great, got it. I can do that. And I think that there was something for me and even just a big lesson that I feel like I'm working on this year is completely around surrender. My doula was mm. like, that is your word. Surrender, surrender, surrender. <laughs> and I think, especially even towards the end of my pregnancy, I was trying to control. All right. And and I had such a projection of what I thought even being pregnant would be or, you know, what having a partner and being pregnant would be and all of that, that it was like I just needed to let it all go. And I kept trying to fight it and brace the contractions. And it was exactly like you said, I literally just, I don't know what happened, but it was either like 
something downloaded in me or something just switched. And I literally grabbed the side of the tub. And the next time the contraction came, just started moving with it. Mm. And it's when I inside of me was like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this because if I can, it's brutal. And now knowing that I, how quickly I was dilating, like I, I get why it was a little intense. But <laughs> yeah. It, it's just also, I think like taking it one contraction at a time when people say that it's so important because every time I would get through one, I'd be like, oh my God. Okay. 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 But then you, you did one. That's right. And then you get a break. Yeah, you get a break. Exactly. And it's not just like this constant hammering, but I think that's what's hard about when you have, you know, when people are kind of swayed to get induced or things that it's just fighting against your body's what what we can actually handle. Because yes, that was intense, but I could handle it. Mm. How long was your labor overall? I don't know. I mean, I guess I would technically count it from when I lost my mucus plug because I feel like all of that like super early labor stuff. It, yes, it was hard, but you can call that pre labor though. Yeah, because it uh, did yeah. it did prep you. It got exactly. you like yeah. So pre labor was at least twelve hours. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pre labor was at least twelve hours, and then I would say active labor from what four like 3, 4 a.m. till 9.25 at night. Wow. 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 <gasps> yeah. Oh, my That's God. unbelievable. That is it was amazing. wild. Yes. And, and what was that, like, what did it feel like to be lying there with your baby, like, an hour or two later? Tell us about the first latch. Tell us about all that yummy, yummy stuff. Well, she latched pretty much immediately. Like as soon as I got laid down in the bed, I tried to put her on my chest and she did it very easily. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, yes. Yeah, like this is perfect <laughs> And my sister Tallulah actually looked at me because when I was holding her right after I gave birth, I didn't even remember that I had said this until Tallulah reminded me. I looked at her and I said, I missed you. Oh, Luetta. Instead of saying like, "Oh, I love you," it's so nice to meet you. I said, "I missed you," and I just had this moment when she told me, and I was like, "Oh, it's because I know you." Like, I've known, um, which I feel like I do. I like, and I'm sure you know most moms have that, but it's just like, yeah, you're my like, you're this person. I can't you're imagine my person never not having you. Yeah, like, I've just been waiting for you, and. And then everybody left. I, you know, my mom had offered to stay that night and help us out. And I don't know, Derek and I just had this moment where we're like, let's just try. Let's see. Let's see if we can (laughs) can do this ourselves the first night. And then, you know, the energy of the house quiets down. People had been bringing me soup and my family was amazing. They had like put sheets on our bed and done, you know, set it all up and I'm in there in those like, you know, like mesh granny panties with my big diaper and trying to like sort everything out. And then the house gets quiet and we just look at each other and we're like, what do we do with her? How how do you do this? (laughs) 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 What are you supposed to do now? (laughs) I'm exhausted. I just gave birth to her, but I can't stop looking at her. Oh my God. Yeah. And I think, I don't think I slept very much that night, but I just... I was just so in awe and I kept, it's still surreal to me that I'm her mom or that I am a mom or that when people say, oh, is that your daughter? I'm like, yes, it is because I have a daughter. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's so strange and also the most miraculous thing. Like I've, I've never loved anything more in my entire life and would do anything for this kid. Aww. And it's also strange because she looks so much like me that, and I know this will probably put her in therapy later, but it's like I'm looking at myself. Totally. Like I feel like I have such an opportunity in a non-creepy, you know. Like reparenting. Way. Yeah. It's like, I feel like I get to reparent myself. And, you know, obviously you find the boundaries. So you're not like putting all of your failed hopes and dreams <laughs> into this like, little thing. But yeah. There's something so beautiful because I look at her and even say, you know, when you're having that hard day, I don't know if you guys had this, but I feel like nobody really talks about like the hormone drop on day three. Mm. Day three. We talk, we talk about, we talk about it a lot. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like that's some, that I had never really 
heard that much about and it's so mm-hmm. intense. But then at the same time, you're like, oh my God, I feel like my life's crumbling. Everything's terrible. But I look at this little being and I'm still so happy or like, oh my gosh, my my nipples are literally so raw and I like can't even imagine having to like feed you again right now because it just hurts so bad. But it's like, it's still a privilege every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, there's that weird thing where just it's amazing that two things can exist at once. It's yeah, so true. That, they, that those things are able to coexist. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, day three, it's like I always make sure I check in on all mm-hmm. my friends day three. Yeah. Even if it's like I'll I'll wait outside the door. If you need me, I'm here. Because yeah. it, it does, I remember feeling really sad with Poet in particular on day three because Mark – what Mark was feeling very overprotective and wasn't letting anyone come mm-hmm. <laughs> come visit because yeah. he was feeling really overprotective. And I remember being like, oh, I know that everyone says to like lie in with your baby and like just have it be the little cocoon, but I wanted my people around. And he was being too overprotective for me. And day three, I was just like, oh, oh like sobbing, crying that whole day. Like yeah. what is happening? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then, so talk to us about like the sore nipples and the, all that sort of stuff. Engorged so she, boobies. Oh, yeah. yeah. So wow. that, that lat, the first latch, you felt like it was a really successful latch. And did you feel like she then like regressed with the latch or the nipples just were trying to get used to it and they were, they were just sore? Well, she had a little bit of a tongue tie or a mm. lip tie. Sorry. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you guys had this. I felt weirdly that like, not that it would be like sensual, but I didn't think it would be so intense breastfeeding because yeah. I, in my head, the context I had is like, if you're in a sexual situation and you know, you have a partner that's doing it where you're like, oh, this, they're sucking up my nipples and it's not that bad. But when your kid yeah. does it, it's so much more intense. Yeah. Yes. It's very, very different when they're trying to you know, get food out of there. Yeah, it's wildly different. So then I knew it was like, okay, wow, this is going to be very different. Cool. And so her top lip was super tied. So like the tops of my nipples, mm. she was pulling because her lip like would just oh. almost get white and even her little nose would get white. Oh. Um, so we, I did a revision on that and that like really helped so much. Um, And then she had a tongue tie as well. And we did that. And I've noticed even actually now it's what I'm dealing with is like, she still has a lot of tension in it and has like, a you know, it's like you have to kind of retrain their their tension here on the sides, tension here and then here. Because like, look, we go through a lot in the coming out as well. And they're also just their own people that have their own, like, you know, asymmetry and stuff that you kind of have to work with. So what I'm doing kind of right now is helping to like retrain her cheeks and get her mouth functioning because I feel like there really is a bit of this, there's so much energy before you give birth, right? It's like checking on you every week, everyone, even like the first two weeks postpartum, you know, everyone's like, how are you? Can we bring you something? What do you need? I also had a very overprotective partner who was like trying to, you know, (laughs) keep everyone at bay. (laughs) Yeah. And I also was like, no, I want everyone here all day long. Like, this is great. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm like that. So you're trying to, you know, find the balance between you're like, okay, I've got this like new nuclear family and then I have mine. Like, how do I find the balance between all of that? Yeah. Especially because my family and I are like so, so incredibly close. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's strange to find like a a new balance between that. But I think, I don't know. I I, I kept, I kept trying to just remind myself that whenever new things would happen, like, okay, I have like, I have people I can reach out to. I have thankfully a friend who had just given birth, like her baby came a day before me, my other friend, (sighs) you know, had a baby three weeks ahead of me. So I had people at least that were going through the same things I was going through, Mm. but it's, it's terrifying as a parent because you're going, all right, should I like literally laser something in my kid's mouth? Is that the right choice? Should I do this? Is that, you know, there's horror stories, um, on both sides. Like what, what do I do? And 
we kind of quickly realized that that's, I think, kind of just what parenting is, is that you never really know if you're doing the right thing, but you're just trying to do the best that you can with the tools that you have. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And especially when it comes to those first like few days, I mean, and it's nursing and it's like you're worried about them gaining weight or like losing weight or, yeah. you know, just like, OK, my milk is coming in or it's not coming in very quickly or whatever those questions are that come up or, you know, yeah. I remember with my son, with Wyatt, I had to a million times I had to pull his mouth off like I had to take off the latch Mm -hmm. and then redo the latch again okay let's redo the latch Mm -hmm. again and he also had a tie right here yeah Um, but it they were like you know you could do it or not do it it's not enough to where it matters and I think you can train him you know to um keep trying to nurse and but it would make my nipple kind of go flat like at yeah. the top, you know, yeah. like I would almost have like a line across. Yeah. Like a little red one. Right. Yes. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this it was so painful. Yeah. And then finally, it like it it happened. Finally, the latch happened. But I just remember in those first like, you know, a couple of weeks just like pulling off, putting on, pulling off, putting on, like trying to adjust mm. that. And um, I and think did it something- help fading the nipple like you know how you can feed a little bit more of the areola in there yeah. when they're latched on were you able to do that either of you yeah it's like when they're when they get pinchy though like yeah when this happens then it like even if you've like fed it all in there then mm-hmm. they'll readjust and get pinchy like though it, it like it's weird and you can't uncurl the lips well she didn't, she didn't have enough space Lip. to do it now she does yeah. Yeah. But what's interesting now is that she's like, my, my letdown is so fast. I mean, you guys, my boobs are out of control. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I could have boobs. This I know. Way. I mean, we actually probably need a bigger screen just to fit yeah, your, to fit. your today's <laughs> in the bottom half here. <laughs> but she does this thing now where I try and feed her and she puts her arms up and she goes, like this where mm, she's like it's, it's too, fa- too fast too fast my let down is so yeah. fast the thing starts gagging a little bit oh my god <laughs> yes. i'm not trying to waterboard you i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's wild oh. because, like, i was they taught me how to i had this amazing lactation consultant come by and she was showing me like different things that you can do and even like occupational therapy to like help um retrain their mouth and all of this different stuff and it's just wild and I feel like so much more attention needs to be brought on like providing more support postpartum because all of a sudden it's like you know after the first two weeks everyone's like bye yeah (laughs) good luck you're in it woo yeah Yeah. exactly and then you're just in it and you're doing it every day and again look it's like such a joy she's literally the most magical creature and I would spend every day at home for the rest of my life Mm. taking care of her and also at the same time sometimes I'm like I just need someone to hold her for like five minutes just so I can take a bath and like recenter myself yeah Yeah. or you know and and then two are not mutually exclusive because right I mean most of the time I end up just bring her in the bath with me which is most Always. delightful thing ever yeah, it's I so nice it. my favorite thing it's so but nice. it's also nice to have a bath alone it's also nice to like yeah, have, have a, a minute yeah or yeah. shower a, a minute to like you know regroup just like you're saying and you're totally right there's not there really is not enough in the we don't take care of our moms that's for sure no. in like postpartum care for that and they're kind of left to their own devices which is It's lonely. It's It's lonely lonely. when you're in it because then you feel like what you're doing because we don't live in these like communes that we wish that we lived in. But what you feel like you're doing is that you're like, okay, I'm I'm nursing and I'm learning and I'm doing all this stuff with my baby. But at the same time, I'm like Googling stuff. Is this normal? And I'm texting friends and I'm like, should I do this or shouldn't I? And you feel like you're sort of torn between your device (laughs) that you're constantly trying to get information from. And also this time with your baby Um, and your partner, if your partner's able to be there, if your partner's not working or like whatever. So how has that been? Have you had him around? Yeah, he's been around. He actually just started going back. Um, 
he's like gone now during the day, like three days a week. I'm, I'm very spoiled, you know, having him here, but you know, even still when you've got, when they're like, you know, they're, he was very overprotective and cooking and cleaning and like doing the thing. And it's like, everybody at a certain point is like, okay, you know, like <laughs> they want to get, you know, he wanted to get back to his stuff. And then suddenly I'm going, okay, wait, but how do then, how do I feed myself? Because like, you know, mm -hmm. I, how do you then put them down when they're not here? Like I took a shower today <laughs> and I put her in a little bassinet outside the shower and I literally had to keep, keep like going in and out of the shower to put her little pacifier back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, you, you take for granted those, those few minutes that yeah. you, know, you can just say, Hey, can you, can you hold her for two seconds just while I do this or while I yeah. pee or while I, mm -hmm. you know, I literally felt like the other day she was just really wanting me and I just had to pee holding her because <laughs> she just didn't want to be put down. Yeah. The amount of times I've breastfed a kid, like <laughs> literally while I'm taking a dump is like <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so you've got your like newborn on you and you're like, this is so strange, but I've got no other option right okay. now. <laughs> Also, by the way, I have to say, you guys, because I know you guys talk about poo and pee as so much as I do here. Like, I was so scared to poop after oh, because yeah. I was so terrified. And everyone's like, oh, girl, watch out. The first poo, the first poo. Yeah. I, I ate so many dates and oh took gosh. so much magnesium because I was so scared of what, was, what it was going to be. How was that. the first poop? It was totally fine. Okay, it was, it was totally fine. fine. A little pressure? Mine's no, always been really fine. fine. Because I had so many dates and I was like only eating Ayurvedic food for like the first week. Oh, um, oh, oh. look at that hair. Ah! So much hair. <laughs> Did you have a lot of hair? I didn't have, no, I was bald, but I oh had a lot gosh. of, I had a lot of acid reflux, which everyone says, <gasps> oh yes. Is, oh, oh, yes. oh, the oh, newborn baby. sound. Oh, oh swoon. <laughs> I cannot, literally. You sound like a little pterodactyl. We'll both be pregnant in five minutes. I, seriously, my period <laughs> just came back after 21 months postpartum. Oh, and my I was God. Like, but just should we? Like, should we? Just yeah, it's like, you're insane. It. I'll do it together, girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is What are you, me? looking back at all of this and knowing, like, how much you had prepared yourself and learned and everything, like, do, what do you feel like was one of your, like, big lessons? Like, one of your takeaways? Mm. Like, what was revealing itself to you or, you know, kind of showed up for you? I realized that I spend a lot of time um, trying to like avoid conflict mm. and that you can't do that when you're someone's mom. You can't people please and you can't do things that you think will just like avoid conflict. Like I didn't want anybody. We have the thing with like, I don't want anyone to like kiss her face or mm. her hands. I had a girlfriend of mine who came in really hot and I literally froze. And I was like, uh, and I couldn't say anything. And I was like beating myself up for it. I mm. hear you. And I was like, God, why can't I? It's my kid. I can't even like, how, how can I not even prioritize what I know is the best thing for her? And, and, and so I kind of just, I don't know. It's something I've been working on a lot. And I realized in the beginning too, because like you were talking about Teresa, like I wanted everyone here. Mm. I wanted everybody here. and but I didn't, I didn't say what I wanted. And I kind of was waffly and I wasn't like, you know what? I know that everything that we had talked about it being us two or, or, you know, not having that many visitors, but I realized this is really the kind of support that I need and want. So yeah. is that yeah. for you? and I didn't advocate for myself and it, it, it made it, you know, messy. And I, I created like then an inability to like advocate for the kind of care and support I needed so that mm. then I mm -hmm. felt like a little lonely. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I was okay and fine, but, but I think I really, hi, I know you're the best. I think I would really work on, on being really clear about now knowing, okay, this is what I really need postpartum. This is what I really yes. need. This is the kind of support I need. Mm. This is the kind of, um, this is what I want. And just being, being loving and firm and not apologizing for having those, those needs or those yes. desires. Mm. Yeah. Hey, grumpy lady. 
I want a thousand of them. I want a thousand. <laughs> Girl, I, um, my husband was like, Teresa, I think this is a serious addiction. And I was like, I'm not just addicted. I am not addicted to it. He was like, oh no, God. legitimately. He's like, because the, the conversation's always about like addiction. When we talk about addiction in our house, we're always talking about Mark. And I'm like, he was like, no, you have like a baby addiction. Like you have a pregnancy, birth, <laughs> baby addiction. That's and so he's like, you're trying to just like, you know, build the family. And I was like, I am because I just, wait, wait, what? That, this isn't a bad thing. I just want to keep having them because I love them. And I love, I love like how each one brings this new dynamic shift to the yes. family and then That's seeing cool. them all together. And I just like, oh, I want a, a massive family. I just do. I want a, I want a huge family. It's my truth. Me too. Anyway. Listen, <laughs> you know, you can just tell Mark that un- until we get to like Kimberly Vanderbeek status, he can't, he can't <laughs> do this. I know, that's two more. I'm at least having two more. (laughs) I think that's a very reasonable number. Did you? Okay, so here's my question for you, because this is the thing that I run up against all the time, is like my truth, my like everything, my passion is being a mom and having all these kids. Oh, my God, I love it so much. Uh, It's all I dream about, honestly, every night is what I dream about is having more babies and our family. (laughs) So the thing that I, I worry about is like, Oh, but my career, my career, like Mm. I'm going to lose opportunities. If I follow like the passion of my heart, I'm going to lose opportunities. Mm -hmm. So did you ever like, were you ever worried? Like, what does this mean for me? Like career wise, if I go down the path of parenthood or like, are you, you're still so new into the mothering space. Maybe you haven't even thought about that and, you know, work opportunities, but I'd love to hear someone being in the same industry as me. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, I wasn't working very much before I got pregnant because I think people don't really know what to do with me a little bit. Because you're a high, fa- <laughs> you're, you've got a slash jobs because you're also a singer and you're also. But I also just think it's like, you know, I, when I was like 18 or 19 and really started acting, like I had this like Justin Bieber black short haircut and I would like had a bunch of tattoos and I you know, I I really limited myself with how I was viewed when I would go to events or whatever. Like I I really gave myself a specific look, right? Which my mom was always like, don't do that because then people won't be able to look at you with any imagination. Right. And I feel like people can't because it's like, I'm, I have just enough awareness publicly. Like I have more awareness than I've earned from the work I've done because of my family. And so I think there's been this weird kind of thing where people are like uh, like they just don't really know what role or like where to stick me right Mm, that's so interesting I get stuck as either I would say the majority of the time I either am playing like an LGBTQ character or um I'm I'm a drug addict or I've had some sort of like sexual abuse is like usually like <laughs> really wow I always get the trauma characters everyone's like should be great for that like any person in trauma like oh yeah Teresa would be perfect <laughs> like what why yeah and I'm sitting there going you know I can also dress very feminine <laughs> like I can <laughs> yeah I hit a point in my 20s where I then went like was wearing makeup every day and was trying to like overcorrect and be super femme because I thought <laughs> it would help yeah but I think I think I'm honestly trying to find I, I love acting and and I love singing and if you know there's an easeful way that that can continue being a part of my life I would love that you know like my dream in life is to be like one of Wes Anderson's like muses and just like even if I only did like Wes Anderson movies for the rest of my life I'd be like cool great I yeah, mean yeah same Wes because you're <laughs> listening uh just same same tease. <laughs> or like a tv show or just something you Looking know like a 40 year old white woman <laughs> yeah he's shooting something in Berlin <laughs> right now and I, I was like my husband's like oh because I just said oh I just want to go to Berlin and he was like you should try and get a role in the West, new Wes Anderson movie because Michael Sarah's in it Mark's friend oh. I'm like, mm, yeah I can dream we can dream. Anyway, yeah, we, we could yes. all dream. That'd be perfect. <laughs> but, but what I really want to do, and I might actually start doing it, I found a, a friend that might let me uh, have her be the guinea pig, is I want to create a service, right, where there's so much mom stuff, right? I got so much stuff sent to me and I bought so much stuff because I love trying things. And I want to do something where um, 
it's a doula. I'm actually learning how to become a doula and I would do that for certain people, but also something that's like a doula of just the mom pre baby and then postpartum. So I would Mm -hmm. come into your house, give me a budget. You say, I am want things that are sustainable, eco-friendly, like all green. Like I could come bring you all of like, I don't know, a, the right pillows like and and yes yes so I, like I've done the research it's kind of like goop it's kind of like a mix of yeah. other things I can come in and because I've had a couple of friends be like oh well what uh nipple cream did you use what you have a lactation consultant and then connect people so I'm like all right I have all of these care yeah. providers do you need a doula do you need a midwife mm. and really helping people feel supported and taking the guesswork out of some of the new mom stuff because yeah, there's stuff yes. that, you know, what's a breast pumper for this? Do, like no one, if I hadn't had a friend who had struggled with milk production, I would have never known to get different size flanges for pumping. Yes. Yeah. Would have never known. Uh, I think that's such a great idea. And also like being mm-hmm. a mom too, you can just yeah. bring your baby along with it. Yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah, so, which would be so nice. Oh, it's so great. What are you using for, um, like, did you have a favorite prenatal vitamin or like postpartum or is there something that you're like doing to nourish yourself in a way that, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I really feel, feel supported in that way. Is there anything? I found needed prenatal and I love all of their stuff. Um, mm. and I switched to them like halfway through my pregnancy that, and actually the sweet gal on Instagram, who's also pregnant, created this company called um, Soft and Fat. And it reminds me actually a lot of Bayo. And she's she's like really cute and about to pop as well, but she makes beef <laughs> tallow cream. Oh, what's that? So it's, it's like a cream that's made out of beef fat and it has an interesting smell to it. But so my midwife, because I tore and I was like, well, what do you put on your yeah. vagina? Obviously you can't put like, I don't know, normal stuff. So I had this beef tallow cream that has that this gal made that has like calendula and chamomile. And that's what I used every day because she said also, if, like if you have, if you tear it all, or even if you have just the little skid marks, you should put something on there before you pee because it will help yeah. keep, the, you know, keep it from stinging. And I did that every day and I, I never stung when I peed really? and, and I use it now as diaper rash cream on her. Oh my gosh. Wow. How cool. interesting. But it's nice because there's all of these different things that I've, that I'm kind of finding and, you know, and you just think about different stuff as a mom, like, okay, what kind of clothes does she have? What kind of detergent? What kind of Mm. like pillows or crib sheets or, or all of this stuff. I wish that I could say that I had like good self-care for myself and have been taking care of myself, but I don't think I thought I had mastitis one day, I think maybe like the week before last. And I realized it was the first day in this almost eight weeks that she's been alive that I spent the day in bed. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. God, you and I are so similar. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't, like, I would come over and then I was like, oh, I have to clean the house. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I, in the basement, so I have a second to like do her laundry and do stuff and restock uh, her papers. And I have another question for you being a first time mama bear. Um, the postpartum experience with the, because everyone harps on about, oh, the sleep, the sleep deprivation, the sleep. How have you yeah. found that aspect of it? Because one of my girlfriends who's about to pop is like, oh, I just love sleep so much. I'm really worried about it. Like, what's your experience been with that? I mean, I'm tired. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like pregnancy so deeply prepared me. I feel like my body takes really well to pregnancy because I feel like literally in the first trimester immediately was like waking up multiple times a night and then going back to bed where normally before I was just like out like a light. So for me, I don't know, that has been not terrible, you know, thankfully Derek, like he's on diaper duty. So at (laughs) night, even if he doesn't take her to, you know, feed her, or I don't get like a couple hours of sleep, which I wish we Mm -hmm. could trade off that way. But 
you know, I'll wake him up to change her. So then I have like micro sleep for two minutes yes. changing her. But then I just feed her. And, and also because I co-sleep. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Like what I, your setup is. I did a lot of research to make sure I knew how to do it safely because there's so much rhetoric about how you're going to suffocate your child and how unsafe it is. And I read an incredible book called Safe Infant Sleep that a girlfriend of mine who's a doula gave to me. And when you start looking at and thinking even just logically about it and you go, oh, right, they were just, she was just inside my body for nine months. Mm -hmm. How she learned, like she's, her body is completely regulated to mine. And so you're telling me that you want me to take her and put her somewhere where she doesn't have body heat, where she can't hear my heartbeat. She can't feel my breath. Mm. And that's just, it just didn't make sense to me. I know it doesn't work for everybody, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, like there's not been a night that I have not slept with her. She slept in the mm-hmm. bed with me every night. Yeah. And she even sleeps on the side because that's how she slept in the womb. And it makes it really easy because I just, yes, he looks literally like a drunk old man right now. Oh my gosh, so (laughs) cute. Yeah, we, when we were writing our book, we wanted to write about co-sleeping because for Sarah and I, Mm-hmm. It's just how we did things. It's how yeah. we did things. And it's how I feel like I've been able to have four children because yeah. I have not felt that tired. I mean, yes, tired, but not not the sort of tired where you're like getting up and walking down the hall and turning the lights on, like that kind of dis- like disruption to your sleep if your baby's in another room. I can right. imagine how tired, yeah. how tiring that would be. So we had um, a yeah. doctor contribute to our book and um he has like very specific safe co-sleeping practices so we included that as a part of our book and we've had so much amazing feedback about it because there are so many ways that you can even if you're feeling wobbly and worried about there's so many ways that you can make that safe and feel good about it um and you just you're right right. you just have to go online and you do the research honestly the most amazing trick that this lactation consultant showed me was when you're doing the side lying breastfeeding and then when they're done you just take their little face and rest it on your boob and then you know that they can breathe and I was like oh my god you have just unlocked the most magical (laughs) trick for me because then I felt super confident with her yeah the first couple nights I kept looking over and being like are you breathing yeah I still do that even with the fourth you know even postpartum with the fourth of first few hours you're like (gasps) up that first night being like is everything okay is she still breathing is her is her oh, chest yeah. moving yes okay she's fine it's like that never goes no matter how many babies yeah I have a question for you guys did you guys <laughs> I literally don't trust anyone else to hold her <laughs> I mean I, I let people hold her all the time, right <laughs> my mom my sisters my partner I I am <laughs> I even look at Derek sometimes and I'm like you're not holding her right you gotta no 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 no. like big like hold hold her a little better two hands two hands I don't know if that happened to you guys but I I'm like I expect everyone to drop her that's Mm. so interesting I don't think I had that I was probably too far the other way (laughs) yeah I was too far the other way I was sort of like we she'll be right oh she'll be fine people like oh so worried to hold her I was like no 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 she's fine like it's okay you got it yeah I don't know I got more nervous with people who seemed nervous like when somebody feels a little awkward when holding the baby because holding a baby holding a new freshie is very different than holding like a four-month-old right so when somebody would like go to hold the freshie like the there's like like, just everything's like jello you know like they kind of so they're so floppy and so when someone would go to take the baby and they'd be like oh and then they'd be like so nervous i'd be like dying inside like what why are you so scared like just take a deep breath and hold the baby like you're good you know like put hold that up and um so that's what would make me nervous but if somebody came in and was like oh i've got this and like took the baby then i felt fine so but i mean it just yeah but it's that mama bear instincts it is strong i feel ferocious like i'll pass her off i pass her off all the time because i i think it's good and i've seen moms who are too like (gasps) like i'm not like that at all Mm -hmm. because i'm not it's like I'm not I'm not afraid necessarily that 
something's going to happen. Maybe that a little bit, but it's just like, I, I, I know I can do it better. <laughs> yes. Yes. I get yes. it. <laughs> that taps into your like c- wanting to be in control, right? That yes, taps into 100%. your like control I'm thing. I'm such a manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's crying. Let me just do it. I got it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I I did do that with Mark maybe a little bit. Like the moment the baby yeah. makes a peep, I'd be like swoop in and grab, which, you know, is probably not the greatest thing. Well, we've got to let them, we can let them learn. Yeah, we got to let them yeah. learn. But then you can't, like you hate hearing your little teeny tiny, like I calling know. out for you or, you know, and you don't want to break that bond where the dad's like kind of wobbly and trying to figure it out with the baby and they're trying to establish their own connection and, you know, mama bear just swoops in. I, I was definitely guilty of doing that. Uh, I think maybe I got better with the with You the have four. to like set them up for success, right? Like give them, like give yeah. them a fully fed baby that just needs a little burp and a (laughs) little snooze and maybe a diaper change but like set them up for success because if you give them yes pass the baby over and the baby's like on the verge of needing needing milk soon then it's going to start crying it's going to want you again and then you're like they're going to feel bad and you're going to feel like you swooped in and like really it's best to just like Get the feeding Tank done. Them up, pass them, them off. Over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's amazing is because he he at the, in the beginning changes. You know he changes a lot of her diapers, um, but in the beginning, pretty much did I would say almost all of them, unless he you know couldn't do something or you know a late night one. And so now, if she's ever having you know constipation or something, sometimes he'll just grab her, and it's like she has gotten comfortable enough to then she knows it. That oh. like he changes her, so then she'll just poo. Oh. It's like he'll. Oh, oh my, my gosh! gosh. <laughs> That's a really sweet role. That's really cute. It's like his role. Oh my god! Oh, I it's a way it. to keep him feeling uh, included, though. I know, too, like yeah. included in the care. I said I'm doing the input so he can do the output. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god! I love oh that. my god! I could literally go on and on with you all day long. This has been this is such amazing. an amazing birth story and postpartum conversation, which I think is just so important. And thank you for sharing, like you know, this entire journey with us, like all through your pregnancy. If you guys are listening now and you didn't hear the um, um, like pregnancy journey for rumor, go back and listen to it. Cause it's amazing. And she kind of walks us through all of her intentions for her birth and um, things that she was nervous about things. She was excited about. And then this, like, thank you so much for showing up and sharing your story. It's just going to mean so and much sharing to so her people. with us too. It was so yes. nice. <laughs> Little glimpses and noises. You guys are paving the way and, and, and sharing stories, I think vulnerably and honestly, about the fear about because there's not there's not conversations hi Benny there's not conversations enough to me about successful home birth stories yeah empowering stories or home birth transfers that were still very empowering that like there, there needs to be space for these stories that went well look I tore and I'm a first time mom and like and all of these other things and it was still the most amazing day of my life yeah. I've felt more powerful I've never felt more like proud of myself yeah this this like fully transformational moment of being able to say look at this thing that I was so afraid of and that I did yes Mm -hmm. you know and there needs to be more access to those kind of stories and things like this so that women can feel like they can do it and it's not like oh my god I'm like I had a gal call me the other day my sister connected me to a friend of hers who didn't want to have an epidural and, or maybe couldn't have. And she was calling me and, but she, cause she was so scared. Cause all of the oh. rhetoric is about, Oh, you can't do it. Even doctors being like, I don't think you can do that. You, yeah. you can't do it. There's not, you know, people who are advocating for you and then you're being scared. Look, the last thing I ever thought is if someone said, I'm going to cut you and give you an episiotomy that I would have readily agreed that fast. But I understand now why, when, you're in a hospital and you have a care yeah. provider saying, this is what you need to do. 
that in that moment, while, while you're just this portal bringing this new life in, that if you feel that their life is in danger, you're like, oh, yes, whatever you have to do. Absolutely. Yes. And I think a lot of C-sections and maybe other interventions could be avoided. Yeah. And not all the time. Look, we have OBs and surgeons there because they reason. are needed. Yep. Yeah. They, there are moments. But I think a lot of the time, if we just allow more space for physiological birth to occur, mm. it can. And look, mm. and I tell you what, this little girl is so mellow and so calm because I didn't mm-hmm. force her out, even though I was so frustrated. All my friends were going early. She came <laughs> and she wanted. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. How amazing. Well, it's Rumi, so you're such an inspiration. Yeah. I can't wait for people to hear this episode. It's, I know. it's seriously like, it's episodes like this that I feel <laughs> like can have such a positive impact on people's experiences. So thank you for sharing so. so openly and vulnerably. My pleasure. Yeah, I love talking so I much. Um, I know. I can't wait to come and give you a squeeze in person when I'm back. We're going to have to like have you back on to talk about the, um, you know, first three months and the four month sleep regression. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that's not coming. <laughs> um, oh, we love you so much. Thank you, Rumor. And you guys have been listening to the Mother Days podcast. Um, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Goodbye, daisies. Bye.